In this module, we're looking at structural systems in which timber has been used internationally. More and more architects are looking to use timber for iconic buildings as well as smaller buildings. And in this module, we'll look at the range of structural systems in which we're finding timber. And you can see from this list that there are a large number of them, starting from timber frames, where most people are familiar with the use of timber, right through to some really large buildings. Timber frames are often used in housing where the timber actually supports the cladding as well as carrying loads from the whole structure down to the ground. They can be prefabricated or the whole frame can be erected on site. The same system can be extended to commercial use where it can be used in hospitals, apartments, multi-residential buildings, uh, aged care facilities. And in Australia, we're starting to see more and more larger buildings making use of timber framing. Post and beam construction uses timber beams sitting on top of timber columns, and they're clearly visible in this photograph. They carry structural loads without necessarily carrying the cladding loads. There are other systems in behind it that pick up the loads from the cladding and transfer it through to the main structural system which carries gravity loads down to the ground. In this building, which is a large office building, you can see a large number of columns and the underside of the beams essentially functioning as post and beam system to carry gravity loads. Lateral loads on this type of structure have to be carried by other structural systems such as bracing walls. In portal frames, the beams and the columns are connected together using rigid moment carrying connections. And those rigid moment carrying connections transfer lateral loads as well as gravity loads down to the ground. In the photos on this slide, you can see that the gravity loads are reasonably substantial, being complete aircraft. In industrial settings, portal frames are often used out of timber, and these structural systems make use of larger members. These ones here are glued laminated timber. And again, we have large connections that carry moments at the junctions between the beams and the columns. Trusses make use of triangulation to transfer loads within a structure. The loads are transferred by tension and compression within the members, which tend to be a lot smaller than the members we saw in the portal frames. A key part of trusses is the connections between the members, where we're transferring load from one member into a node and then into its adjoining members. Trusses can be used architecturally, as the left photos show, or they can be used in a hidden application, as the right-hand photo shows. An extension of the two-dimensional truss is trusses in three dimensions, where we call them space frames. Here again, the members are loaded axially, and the main challenge for designers is the connections that are required to transfer the loads from one member into the other to transfer the loads right throughout the structure. Arched systems make use of compression. And arches tend to be much deeper. These arches are more than two meters deep and span around 100 metres, so that these arches transfer the gravity loads by compression in the arch and the curved shape all of the way down to the ground. In fact, in this building, you can see two layers of arches. They're the arches going across the photograph, which are the primary arches, and the arches running into the photograph, which are secondary arches. And down the bottom in this particular slide, you can see the secondary arches that transfer the loads into the primary arches and thence to the ground. If we think of three-dimensional structures where the arches all overlap each other, we have a dome structure. So with a dome structure, it's essentially, again, making use of compression to transfer the axial loads down to the ground. And domes generally have two configurations. One is where the arches are completely continuous, as in the top photograph, and there the arches uh, each function separately, or where the dome is constructed of a reticulated network of smaller members. Either case has very complex connections. If we uncouple ourselves from the spherical cross-section of the dome, we can 
create a number of free form grid structures. In this case, again, we're using essentially tension and compression in the members, but because of their undulating shape, bending is also introduced into those members. And architects can get very, very creative with the way they use freeform grids. And here is one that has a uh, very spectacular shape. Essentially, in that case, each of the members is functioning independently. However, we can put a whole bunch of members together and create a slab, a timber slab that's quite thick, and often these slabs can be of the order of 200 millimetres or more thick, and they can be used as wall slabs and floor slabs. So that this is solid panel timber construction, which is making use of cross laminated timber to transfer loads in much the same way as concrete elements do. So solid panel timber construction can be used in a large number of different buildings. Here are some Australian examples. The one on the right is a, an apartment building, 10 storeys high, and the one on the left is a library building that's a public uh, open space. In construction, you can see the way these timber slabs work together uh, to form the wall and floor slabs that transfer the loads directly through the structural system. Architects have made interesting use of large timber elements and here is a, a building that comes from overseas um, but this building makes use of very large glued laminated members as the columns, as the beams and as the connections themselves. So this is a way in which very large structural timber can be used in an innovative way to transmit loads throughout a structure. A recent development in timber, and it actually comes from New Zealand, is pre-stressed timber beams. In this case, the designer is making use of the really good compression strength and ductility of timber and steel cables in much the same way as we do for pre-stressed concrete. So here the steel cables give us a tensile element buried within a compressive timber element. The connection elements in these types of structures can make use of the good ductility of the timber, but also be replaceable so that after an earthquake, then the uh, whole building can be very simply repaired. And here's a close up showing some of those replaceable timber connection elements. So in summary, you've seen that structural timber is very versatile. There are a large number of structural systems that can be used to transfer loads within a building using timber as the primary structural element. Timber is lightweight. As a result, even though sometimes these members are quite large, they look very slender in a very big building. And architects love that lightweight that gives a, an open feel to their structural systems. The Wood Solutions website is your one-stop shop for information about timber. There's a large amount of information on timber structural systems, on timber products on this website. And also there are some case studies. So if you want to delve into looking at more examples of the use of timber, that is a really good place to start.